Hello. The following is an example of creating an exploded isometric drawing in Revit. Let's start at the beginning. I'm going to launch a 3D view of this project here. This is a standard 3D view. And we'll begin to create these isometric exploded components. Now, this tutorial is based on our previous tutorial which covered the creation of selection sets. So if you haven't had a chance to take a look at that tutorial, I suggest you follow those instructions first and then complete this exercise. So I've gone ahead here under Manage tab, under Selection. Using Load, I've created several selection sets, which allows me to very quickly, for example, grab the exterior walls of my project here and nothing else. Now, with a selection like this in Revit of multiple items, or if I were to drag my mouse to more than one item here, I will see under the Modify Multi-Select menu, here there is a tool called Displace Elements. Now, Normally, if you select more than one item, for example here, these two items here, I can come into this command here, and using the X, Y, Z coordinates here, I can send these two items into the air. For example, if I change the Z value, I can send them 50 feet in the air, and there you have uh, items hovering above your 3D view. If I select these items, you can see they're part of the displacement set. And I could add additional items to the selection set if I'd like by using Edit. And then here with the Add or Remove tools, I can add additional items to this, this displacement set or remove them if they were added incorrectly. So for example, using the Add button here, I can select this stair, for example. Or for example, these guardrails and I'll send them up into the air here. Now, if I made a mistake and I weren't supposed to include these items, I use remove, and by selecting each element, they'll return back to their original locations here in a 3D model. Using finish shows you the results. This is now a displacement set hovering above the model, in which case the guardrails were left behind. Now, rather than do it this way, which is very tedious, I'm going to show you a different method here. I'm going to take this selection set. I'm going to use, I'm going to use reset and basically erase those selections. Therefore, they're back to normal, and you see their individual items. The preferred approach is to go to the selection here under the Manage tab and load selections that were pre-saved. So, for example, if I go load, I created a selection set called exterior walls. I hit OK, and it highlights only the exterior walls, which would take quite a bit of time to select individually. Then I can use the displacement tool here, the value, and send these, this selection up into the air with the Z value. It can also be modified and move the elements vertically up and down. And if you notice here now, if I select this, it's now a displacement set. I made another selection set for these uh, sunscreens. So again, I can go load and very quickly load the sunscreens by hitting OK. And as soon as more than one item is selected on the screen, you have access to the displace elements command, whereby I can click on this command, enter a value here, and send those things into the model vertically. Furthermore, you can go into these and create sub-selections that can be pulled out from the model. Let's say, for example, we want to take the guardrails and the stair and pull it to the left here. But whenever I select the items, it highlights the entire displacement set. If I were to go to reset, they go back to the original location. 
If I go edit and remove these items, they'll again go back to their original location here at the bottom of the screen, which is not what I want. So if I want to grab a subgrouping of elements from this displacement set here, I have to hold the tab, press the tab button. Once you put your mouse on top of the selection, hit tab, and you'll gain access to these parts and pieces here. Tab, click. Now, if there's more than one item you want to select, you have to hold control and with the little plus sign on your mouse, add more items. But be very careful what it is you're selecting. Because if I hover over here, you see it begins to take everything. If I hover my mouse here, for example, again, it's going to try to take the entire displacement set. So hit tab once hover over the item that you're after, hit tab again, right there. And before selecting it, hold control and click. If you don't hold control, you'll lose the previous selection. This is very important. Make sure you hold control and select. Again, if you don't get the right selection, don't select anything on your keyboard. Hit tab once. And once the items are highlighted, hold down control and click. I missed this top rail. I tab, hold down control. I missed that top rail. Hit tab, hold control, click. I missed the stair, hold control, click. This guardrail is grabbing the entire displacement set, so I have to hit tab once, hold control, click. Here, I can simply just hold control and click. So everything highlighted in blue, and it's safe to say that I can then pull this over to the left. Now, if I did that, and here again, I have to hit tab once, hold control, click. Then here, I can choose displacement, and under the X value, I'm going to type 35. It'll move things to the left. And there, you've isolated these elements from the original model, which was previously displaced. Now, to add the guidelines back to the original locations, I would simply click on the displacement set, use the path command here, and grab the edges that will receive the vertical lines. For example, here and here. Here, if you like, here, here. And these will actually go horizontally because this model originated from the model on the left. So if I put my mouse here, and for example, here, it'll send these path lines to the right, back from whence they came. Now, if I hit escape here, and I'm back to this view, and I select one of these path lines here. You'll notice in the properties under depth, you have options here. And what happened here is that this stair moved once from this position here, but the entire group here moved from below. So you can actually trace the path of this staircase back to its original to its original location at the bottom of the screen here by using if I select the path send it back to the original by using number two so it goes one to here and then down to there and I'll pick up an extra line right there so that's path number one I'm sorry that's path number one here and that's path number two you can pick up those types of paths as well. I'm going to just use one for this example. And that's all there is to it. With a few uh, visual style commands, you can uh, turn on the shadows, for example. Perhaps try a, a realistic mode or shaded mode and get the uh, view that you're after. But I've now created a displacement uh, element here. here here, this grouping, 
And again, by clicking and resetting them, they'll go back to normal. So usually what you want to do is take a 3D view, right click and rename it, give it a specific name. In this case, I've called it 3D Displaced and create your presentation or your set. And that's all there's to it. Hope you enjoyed the